Welcome back. We have just gotten um, an egg out of the mechanical eagle, which will hopefully help us get into the bandstand. But while we're here, let's check out the voice cylinder we found. No need to talk to Oscar right now. but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard, and this terrible war is destroying everything. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much, Anna. I guess in this particular case, this was not a voice cylinder that Hans made for Anna to find and watch, but one that Anna actually prepared and sent to Hans. She did say that she usually sent voice cylinders rather than letters because Hans does not like the written word. I guess he kept it here during his stay. Exactly why it ended up in the cabinet of a science lab is not a question I can answer. Yeah, mi miss, miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Marachstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. Are you trying to bribe me? To stop me from reporting your illegal alcohol operation? I don't know. It's a nice gesture, I guess. I don't think Oscar lets you move on if you didn't find the voice cylinder. Not entirely sure about that. I know he requires the actual playback device in the Mammoth to be in the train at all times. But I don't know for sure if he cares about the voice cylinders because I never tried that. I just always have them anyway. All right, let's take a look at the bandstand. Let's try this cuckoo's egg. Which miraculously weighs the exact same as this golden egg. Must not be real gold then, because that would be a heck of a lot heavier. Or at least not solid gold. It did the trick though. It got us into the bandstand. Let's see if we can find out what's wrong with this thing and fix it. Hopefully it's not complicated. Okay, it does look complicated. Wonder if these are like settings 
of some kind, if you can adjust that. Not the game lets us, but just wondering about the real life utility of this device. There is a lever here. Oh, it works like a music box, just a really big one. Okay, so apparently there was actually nothing wrong with the bandstand. It was just not turned on. But I guess they couldn't figure out how to get inside to turn it on. Anyway, we don't really need to tell them that. We just... we'll say we, uh, we fixed it, right? As long as they give us the money. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Actually, we don't really have a problem, so don't know why Kate said that. Gentlemen, I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about <clears throat> We agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. And while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. All right, well, we're working on that. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Again. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. With the money, we can hopefully tow the... boat. Uh, tow the train using the boat. And I think we're done with those three loons, so... That's a good thing, in my opinion. Which means that, yes, we get to go back again to the train. Now there, the bandstand is playing, so at least we get some music. I think it's actually faster to go this way, since we're going to the barge. Still need to take care of the locks, too. Wonder how we're going to have to do that. I can still hear the bandstand from here. I 
Should have asked them for more money. In case we need some more later. They agreed to that very quickly. They also... Did they just give us a bag of coins? Or what? <laughs> like it's a bag of quarters, I guess. I don't know. There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. Ah, thank you. Not difficult to get daughter. See? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We please to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma for bat pensiro sesto, declina madam. No se saye mar alles non comprendo en allora caput en andere bordel. Zirs var moi. On boom telefonieren caput caput. My husband say instructions complicated. No understand manual. My husband angry. Very angry. Oh, now telephone broke. Kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you gonna do next? We wait repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Sailor always need key for lock. Okay, thanks. Good thing he didn't drop that in the water. I guess that's the key for the control panel we saw earlier. Hey there, on the boat. Good tag, Sherda Mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? We actually got a new um, conversation option about the uh, walks, I guess. Never tried uh, talking to them about the Sauvignon berries. Don't know if you can. Not anymore, anyway. Is it the locks that are stopping you from carrying on your journey? Da. Barge no pass. Lock closed. Have you tried, like, just opening them? Nah, not possible. Have try. Now system kaput. Oh, dear. I am sorry about that. Looks like we're all being held prisoners in Barrackstadt then, in a way. Funny that, isn't it? Very funny. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Do svidanya! All right, I guess it's up to us to open the lock, which hopefully with the key, we can do. The locks are actually inside the station. So, going around the outside serves no purpose this time. Oh, phone call again. Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I thought it's fantastic for a coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far. Especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But 
Frank, promise me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little... I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. All right, the ongoing saga of Kate's mom and the opera singer. Just a little touch of the home front with some characterization for Kate. All right, so the locks. We already know that um, calling this phone number does not work because they will just tell you that they'll get to it in like a day, which we don't have time for. And we saw this keypad which is locked, but now we have the key. The instructions are written in a language I don't recognize. Okay, that's helpful. The dials and whatever this is supposed to be are also not very helpful. But the interface is actually simpler than you might think. It actually uses the exact same keys that the phone did. So when we called, we were given a phone menu where we first had to select um, what lock we were using, which was number four, this lock, the Brockstadt lock. And then uh, one was to raise the water and two was to lower the water and star to confirm. Uh, we also had to uh, press the pound key to start, but I don't think you have to do that here. It's kind of weird that they have to make you uh, enter um, four as well. Maybe you can just operate other locks remotely, which seems dangerous to me, but sure. Oh, this shows which, what you're picking. Which also makes it fairly clear that you also, that you only need two numbers, which means you might be more likely to try the numbers from the phone. So we want to lower the water right now, which was number two. And there it goes. That is a fast lock. As a Sea Scout, I've been in quite a few locks and they are not that fast. Um, I don't need to use this console. Not yet. Alright, it does not let you raise it again until you need to. Either they also couldn't read these instructions, or they are horribly overcomplicated because that was actually not that hard. Let's go tell them that the locks are open. No, we just need to talk to them. Hey there, on the boat. Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. God verdomm. Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle etwa, range alle Dinge und oblig alles die Dame. Ach, seid content und zurück again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up. We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay?
All right. This wife does kind of paraphrase what he's saying. I wonder if they leave that unchanged from the French version. His uh, gibberish dialogue. And if so, they could have even used the same voice actor, I guess. But I have never played the French version, so I don't know. Alright, with the boat there, we want to raise the water, which is for one star. That barge fit in that lock pretty exactly, didn't it? Maybe intentional. All right, now we need them, but need to meet them by the train, which means going back over to this side. Better hope this works, otherwise we're out of luck. Hey there! On the boat! Da, da! Barge on other side! You still need us? Um, yes, that was the whole point of this. There! Your barge is over the locks now. It's up to you to keep your part of the bargain. Yes, Belagro. Attach loco loco. My husband say, return to train, attach chain, then barge will pull. Okay, I'll get moving. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, loco loco mit chain. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train, and chain to train with barge. Hop! Catch it up! Alright, we got a chain, I guess. If that's going to work... Looks like something's missing. Vague as always. What Kate actually means is that there's no way to attach the chain to the train, for which we need the hook we found earlier. Alright, looks like it's working. I wonder where they're going now. I suppose that gate over the river in the wall opens. All right, let's go wind as a train. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukos at any moment. Please make haste to come. 
Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Okay, I guess we're not winding a train. We're gonna go do this lecture first. That should be interesting, give us some idea of what... Um, Hans is chasing. Maybe some better clues as to where he's gone, or is going, as the case may be. Which, yes, means walking all the way back to the university. Oh, wrong mouse button. We need to go back to the university anyway, because, like I said earlier, Oscar will not let us leave without the mammoth doll. So we need to get it back from the professor, and hopefully since he's giving his lecture, he will be done with it. And he said he'd be in the main lecture hall, which we found earlier. It is up here. I don't think we've been to a lecture in a game since ah, Gabriel Knight. There you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. It's a very popular lecture. There's two people here. Three counting us. Oh, uh, okay, a few more. Still not very crowded. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. And curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. And this people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yukol forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. 
They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yuko Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Near tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice arc is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yuko's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lectures should you so require them. All right. That was pretty interesting. I guess these Yukols had a close bond with the Mammoths. Which would explain why Hans is interested in them. But we'll continue in the next video.